Welcome to your new Plateau XL wide body built by Pleasureway Industries on the Mercedes-Benz cutaway chassis. My name is Phil Nickel. I will give you a brief orientation and walkthrough of the operating systems of your new vehicle. The 2015 Mercedes-Benz Plateau XL features a Mercedes-Benz powertrain. It features the three-liter six-cylinder engine coupled with the five-speed Mercedes-Benz transmission. Underneath your hood, you'll find your auxiliary battery. The engine starting battery is located below the driver floorboard in the passenger cab area of the vehicle. The auxiliary battery located underneath your hood is a 95 amp hour battery. This controls and powers the interior of your coach. For boosting your engine starting battery, Mercedes-Benz has left you a port underneath your hood. This is also where you would charge your engine starting battery if you have a trickle charger. You would hook your positive cable onto the red area and your negative cable will be attached to the brass ground post just above the auxiliary battery. The Mercedes-Benz 3.0-liter engine meets the emission standards required. It does require DEF fluid. The DEF fluid assists in the exhaust coming out of your vehicle. The DEF fluid is filled at oil change intervals. Please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual as to your oil change intervals and DEF top-up. To lift your Mercedes-Benz hood, pull the hood release inside the vehicle, release the center latch, and lift. You will notice that you have a locking mechanism that locks and holds your hood in place. To release the locking mechanism, lift up on the hood, push the locking mechanism toward the cabin of the vehicle, and lower your hood. To fuel your Plateau XL, it features the Mercedes-Benz gas cap door, which can only be opened if the driver door is unlocked. Simply open your driver door, open the fuel door, and remove the cap. The Mercedes-Benz engine runs off of the ultra-low sulfur diesel. Very important to your vehicle is the labeling of the vehicle. You will notice we have the Pleasureway label. This features your motorhome serial number. We also have a tire inflation label, OCCC label, your occupant and cargo carrying capacity, as well as the Mercedes-Benz tire inflation label, which is located on your driver pillar. One other label that you can access while in the driver door is undo the zippers to your seat cover and the Mercedes-Benz VIN label, as well as the Mercedes-Benz paint code are featured on the label on the driver's seat base. Immediately behind the driver door on the driver's side, you will find your propane system. This features a 75 pound propane tank, manual opening valve. You have your fuel gauge and level reader on your tank, but it also is read remotely inside the vehicle. This is also where you will fill your propane tank and fill your propane system. This features the fill and the breather valve for when you are filling your vehicle. Also in this compartment, is your propane regulator located underneath this plastic cover. It is recommended that you only fill your propane tank to 80%. At 80%, you will notice when filling, you will get moisture coming out of your breather tube. Also, at 80%, it does show full on the monitor. This is to allow your LP to expand in hot weather. Next to your propane storage area, you have your first storage compartment on the driver's side. This storage compartment features a locking slam latch, open the compartment door, support it on the hook. This compartment is 14 inches high, 21 inches deep, and 26 inches long. All exterior storage compartments are subject to weather and humidity conditions. These compartments may not be moisture free, so please be aware of the items that you're storing in the compartment and if they require additional seal, please ensure that you are packing them in the appropriate packaging. Next to your driver's side outside storage compartment is your generator compartment. Open the door once again and clip it into position. This will give you full access to your generator. 
This features the 2.5 LP gas generator running off your propane tank. Your propane tank will have to be in the on position for your generator to function. There is an interior remote switch to turn on your LP generator as well as an interior hour meter to record how many hours you have on your generator. It is advised to exercise your generator at least half an hour a month. This will keep your generator functioning for a longer period of time as it keeps all necessary components lubricated inside your generator as well as humidity and moisture contamination off the electronics of the generator. To access your generator and the components inside your generator to check your oil. You will need a flat screwdriver or a flat device to unlatch the door. Simply put in a flat screwdriver or a flat device, turn 90 degrees, and this will give you access into the operating components of your generator. Inside your generator, you will notice you have an additional start-stop switch where you can start the generator from outside your vehicle. You will notice directly below the start-stop switch is a breaker. If ever you are on a generator and not getting power into your vehicle, it is important to check this breaker. The breaker should be in the up position to allow power to transfer into the vehicle. Also, when inside your generator compartment, this is a good time to check your oil. Please refer to your owner's manual. Simply unscrew your dipstick and slide your dipstick out. Wipe it down, reinsert it into the oil tube do not thread it back in, pull it out, and this will give you your oil level. Please refer to your own end generator manual for the proper oil for the weather conditions that you are in. Ensure that when you are finished checking your oil, you re-thread your dipstick and tighten it up into its compartment. Your exhaust pipe for your generator is located directly below your generator. This may be warm, so please avoid contact if your generator is running or has just recently been switched off. Ensure that nothing is blocking the end of the exhaust pipe when the generator is in use. Just above your storage compartment, you will find your utility shower. This is a locked compartment. The 751 key on your key ring will open this compartment, turn it 90 degrees. This will give you access to hot and cold running water as well as a shower head with a pull-out hose. Once you have completed using your shower, once again, push the hose back inside the vehicle and store your wand. Next to your utility shower is your utility center. This is the master control of your vehicle. This is where you will find your hookups for such things as your shore power, your park cable, and your city water. The city water requires you to hook on to a pressurized water system with a garden hose. Simply thread the garden hose into your coach and attach to the pole at the park. Now the park system will pressurize the water system. It is recommended that you use a pressure regulator as each park may vary in the water pressure for the vehicle. Second feature in this compartment is the park cable connection. If you have a park that has park cable or satellite available by attaching a cable to the park pole and bringing it into your coach, it will give you access to all channels available in the park. Third feature in this utility center is your park power or shore power. The shore power is a 30 amp supply. Your vehicle will be also supplied with a 30 amp 25 foot Marine Co yellow power cord. To attach your power cord to your vehicle, press it into the opening, turn it to lock it into position. You can also use the locking screw to lock it down into the holder. Once you have attached the power cord to your vehicle, you can now attach to the power supply in the park. Your vehicle is equipped with the Girard Instant Water Heater. This is a propane water heater. It functions off propane and also off the 12 volt system. So you will have hot water if you are dry camping. Inside your water heater cover, you'll find an off on switch. If you are going to be regularly using your vehicle, leave your power switch on. The power will be only flowing to your water heater when you are actually using water inside your coach. You will notice as well, it has vents that have to be kept clear so that your water heater will function properly. This is a tankless water heater. 
The water is heated by going through the copper tubes in the back of the water heater. With rapid flow, the water will not be as hot. With a slow flow, the water will increase in temperature as the water goes through the copper tubes inside the water heater. You will notice there is no drain on this water heater. That is because this is a tankless water heater and only the water that is going through the copper tubes is supplied inside the water heater. This water heater as well, you can run your RV antifreeze directly through your water heater for winter storage. Ensure that your switch is off on your water heater when this is stored for winter. This water heater acts just like a furnace. You will notice it will cut in, you will get warm air coming out of the vent when it is operational. When you shut down your water, your fan or your heating system will continue to run for a short period of time. The Girard water system uses approximately 50% less propane than your standard system for heating water as the Girard system only uses propane when the water is in use. The last compartment on the driver's side, just in front of the rear bumper, is your sewer dump station. In this compartment, you will find your black dump handle, your gray dump handle, your sewer hose, your sewer cap and sewer system for draining the system. To use this system, open your sewer compartment, slide your hose out, hook your hose onto your sewer dump area. You will always pull your black water first, then your gray water, so that the gray water can flush the black water out of the sewer tube. At most sanitary dump sites, you will also find a garden hose there to flush your sewer hose, flush it thoroughly, remove it from the cap, continue to flush. Once again, once you have it flushed out, then you can store it back in the container. You will notice there is just a single end on this hose because of the size of the container. Lock the sewer door and close your black and your gray water dump. Always ensure that you put your cap back onto the sewer discharge. At the rear of your vehicle, you will notice it is equipped with a day-night backup camera. This backup camera is wired to the in-dash stereo system. It will come on when you go into reverse. This backup camera can be moved to the appropriate distance for what you have behind your vehicle. You will also notice there is a sunshade that can be moved to shield the camera as well. Please adjust your camera before leaving home. At the back of the coach, just below your backup camera, you will notice the window that looks into your bathroom. This is a tinted window and is sealed shut due to safety regulations and exhaust fumes. Your vehicle is equipped with the standard 5,000 pound hitch. Your towing capacity of this vehicle is 5,000 pounds. You also are equipped with a seven pole trailer wiring package. This is a Mercedes-Benz system and is wired into the Mercedes-Benz trailer system. When going up steep inclines or parking on steep angles, please be aware of your rear exhaust pipe. This is the lowest point at the back of your coach and so please be aware that it could touch the ground. To train your fresh water tank, your fresh water tank is located between the hitch rails on your vehicle. On the driver's side near the hitch rail, you'll find the drain valve. Open this drain valve. This will allow you to drain your fresh water tank. Also in this same area, on the driver's side, just in behind the brake light, you will find your low point drain valves for both your cold and hot water lines. You can open these water lines. Please be aware when draining your cold and hot system, you will have to have taps open inside your vehicle so that air can enter the water system and you get a proper flow of water out of your low point drains. To fill your onboard water tank, open your potable water storage door, which is at the back on the passenger side. You will need your 751 key once again to unlock and open this compartment. To fill your fresh water tank, remove the white cap, insert your garden hose into the opening and allow the tank to fill. If you notice water dripping out underneath the vehicle, ensure that you have your drain for your water tank closed. Once your water tank is full, you will notice you will get moisture coming out of the vent line. 
and also the fill spigot. Next to your fresh water fill, you will notice your fridge vents. This is an upper lower vent. To make your fridge run most efficiently, ensure that these vents are not blocked. Also, through your lower fridge vent, this will give you access to the plug for your refrigerator. You will notice with the lower fridge vent open, you have access to unplug your refrigerator on the 110 side. You will also notice in this area, you have a drain pan. This plastic drain pan will allow water to run out of the back of the vehicle. You will notice it has two drain areas. Just ahead of your fridge vents on the passenger side, you will find your furnace vent. You will notice that this is where your furnace exhausts when the furnace is running. Please ensure that this vent is not blocked in any way when operating your furnace. Your vehicle is also equipped with two exterior plugs. This exterior plug is controlled by the GFI that is inside the vehicle. Ensure that the GFI is set before plugging items into this area. The GFI is a ground fault plug. Just ahead of the passenger rear wheel, you will find your barbecue quick connect. This quick connect is meant for RV barbecues. This is a regulated line. So if you have a barbecue with a regulator already mounted on it or a cooktop with regulator mounted on it, it will not work off this quick connect. Please see your RV dealers for items that will work off a regulated quick connect. You will also notice there is an off on for the flow from your propane tank just to the right hand side of the opening. Flip it forward to open your flow, flip it backwards to close your flow. I always ensure that this barbecue tea is in the off position when not in use. All exterior storage doors are equipped with your slam latches. The slam latches require your R001 key to unlock them. Insert your key and you will turn 90 degrees to unlock your slam latch. You can now remove your key. It will be open. Pull up on the handle to release the slam latches. The passenger exterior storage compartment is 40 inches long, approximately 20 inches deep, and 16 inches high. Please be aware on all exterior compartments, there are components that come into the compartment in certain areas where the depth, height, or width will not be exactly what we have mentioned. To close your exterior storage compartments, release the storage door from the storage clip, bring it down, and you're equipped with slam latches, so close firmly. The latches will engage and lock. Once again, once you're about to leave, ensure your slam latches are locked and in the closed position. Just above your passenger exterior storage compartment, you'll find your exterior entertainment center. This exterior entertainment center consists of a DVD player as well as AM FM radio, Sirius radio, which is played through additional speakers and through your TV system. The exterior entertainment center features the 32-inch TV, the Kenwood DVD radio CD player, as well as two exterior speakers for entertainment in your camping area. We will refer to how to operate the entire system when we go through the entertainment systems of the vehicle. When your exterior entertainment center is not in use, ensure that the cover door is down also, please be aware that weather will affect the electronic components of your exterior system. Ensure that in rain or any moisture situations, you have your exterior component door shut to your entertainment center. On the passenger side of your coach, one of the key features is your awning. The awning is an electric awning. It's a carefree awning. You will notice it sits slightly above the roof line of the vehicle. You will also notice on the side of the vehicle, the black strip running just underneath the awning is actually a J-channel to direct any water running from the roof away from the awning area. To operate your awning, you will notice there is two switches. One is an off-on switch for your awning. Simply turn your awning on. To extend your awning, push the extend button and your awning will extend. You can stop this process at any time as the desired distance that your awning is out. To continue, you can fully extend your awning. This is a self-supporting awning. It does not have awning legs that will need to be attached to the side of the coach or to be pegged into the ground.
With your awning extended, you will notice you have approximately eight feet of coverage in your campsite. Another feature of your carefree awning is the light track on the leading edge of your awning. These are LED lights. Hit the switch just inside the door below your awning switches to turn these lights on. Your awning is equipped with a wind sensor, which will cause the awning to retract in windy conditions. With your awning retracted, it is now safe to leave your campsite. It is not recommended to leave your awning extended while you are away from your vehicle. Also, before moving your vehicle, retract your awning and ensure that the power switch is in the off position. When the awning is retracted, also ensure that the light bar inside your awning is in the off position. Your 2015 Plateau side entrance door is a metal screen door as well as an electric step. The electric step is automatically extended when you open the door. You will notice there is a yellow glow from underneath. There is a light that comes on when this step is extended. Your switches for your electric step are on the interior of your coach. To operate the electric step, your battery disconnect, which is on the end panel of the entry, must be in the on position. If you choose auto for your electric step, each time you open and close your door, the step will come in and out. You may choose, if you are set up for a period of time in your campsite, to leave your electric step out. Just simply switch the switch to the out position and your electric step will remain extended whether the door is opened or closed. Always ensure that your electric step is retracted when the vehicle is in motion. Always ensure that the area on your screen door and also the area on your door frame is kept clear. These are the two magnets that when they come in contact, this will allow the electric step to retract. To access the shoe storage area, pull on the two black ties next to the carpeted area. This will allow the door to come open, press the door down, this gives you access into a shoe storage area that is 32 and a half inches wide, seven and three quarters of an inch deep, and 10 inches high. To close your shoe storage area, lift and tuck the upper edge underneath the step area. Press the door into place. The bed area of your vehicle in the Plateau XL is a very simple makeup. There are two different beds that you can sleep on in this vehicle. One is the power sofa, which you can lay flat and rest on that, or the full-sized Murphy bed that will fold down over top of your power sofa. To lay your power sofa down and to lay your Murphy bed down, the first step is to remove the armrests on the power sofa, store them up behind the driver's seat, Using the rear remote panel, extend your power sofa. This will give you a single bed in this area. For a larger bed in this area, we will lower our Murphy bed. Before lowering your Murphy bed, ensure that your convenience lights on your valence are shut off. You will find the valence shut off for these lights on the rear control panel above the stove area in the kitchen. To lower your Murphy bed, first unlock both locks, one lock at the back on the kitchen side, one lock at the front just behind the driver's seat. You may have to push the bed towards the outside wall. It will make it easier to unlock these locks. Then simply pull the Murphy bed down out of the wall. The Murphy bed does have hydraulic lifts on them so it is very convenient and light to bring down and to raise up. The Murphy bed in the vehicle is very convenient. It does have complete walk around for this Murphy bed. You can either exit from the driver cabin area or you can exit the bed at the back by the kitchen, but there is a full walkway right around the bed. For your convenience and safety, it is recommended that you fold down the step well cover this is a cover that is mounted just below the fire extinguisher. It is hinged, folds flat, 
to hide the step well opening by the screen door. This way it will also provide you a safety when you walk across the area. To store your Murphy bed, lift up. You will be assisted by the hydraulics. Lock your bed back into position. And reinstall your armrest covers. Now you can lift your power sofa and everything is back to the living area. Your power sofa also features two convenient drawers. These are on roller bearings. They are a deep drawer that can be slid out for convenient storage. We have removed the tripod table base, the table pole, and the table from the rear closet area of the vehicle. To set up your table, fold out the legs of the tripod closet base, place it on the floor in the area where you would like, set your table leg into the tripod base, and set your Corian table on top of the tripod base. The reason we use a tripod base and we do not have a floor lock to lock it into position is so that you can conveniently move your table to the location that you would want as well as you can move your table outside when sitting at your outside entertainment area. Your vehicle is equipped with a skylight located directly over your power sofa. To open your skylight Press the center button. This will release your handle, bring the handle down. To fully open your skylight, slide the handle on both sides through the track till a full open position. If you would prefer your skylight to be down and closed partially, bring your handle up, lock your handle into the secondary position. If you would like your skylight closed slightly more, lock it into the third position and your skylight will be remain just slightly open. To close your skylight, unlock and release from the open position, allow it to slide shut, lift the handle and lock it over the center locking mechanism. Some additional features of your skylight are the screen that can be slid across. This will provide protection against bugs entering your vehicle when the skylight is open. Also, for hot and sunny days or at night, you can slide the nightshade closed. It is recommended that you slide the nightshade closed when the vehicle is in storage. This will prevent sun from entering your vehicle. Your Plateau XL features ample storage. Above the driver and passenger seat, there is a large storage cabinet. This storage cabinet is large enough to fit several sets of golf clubs. The approximate measurements are 68 and 3 quarters inches wide, 25 and a half inches deep, and the height varies from 6 inches to 16 and a half inches, giving you a large amount of cubic feet of storage inside your coach. Directly behind the passenger seat, you will find your pantry. The upper features two shelves. The lower also features two shelves. This is convenient for storage and would make a great pantry area for those miscellaneous items. The upper cabinet next to the passenger side entrance door, just above the TV area, features a narrow cabinet, but a high cabinet allowing you to store taller items. The cabinet directly behind the passenger upper cabinet is also a deep cabinet. This cabinet has a little more shelf space and will allow you to store items that will conveniently fit through the door opening. Your vehicle is equipped with multiplex wiring and multiplex wiring switches. Conveniently located right beside the passenger side entry door is your battery disconnect switch. To turn on your battery disconnect switch, push on the upper end of the rocker switch. You will also notice in this panel, there is also a panel light area. This is for your convenience at night. You can turn off your panel lights. Your vehicle is also equipped with a master light switch. One touch switch that will turn on all the lighting inside the vehicle. On this switch you will find your water pump to turn on your water pump for your faucets, your exterior shower for your bathroom area, and for any other areas where you would want pressurized water. You have your generator start-stop switch conveniently located at this area as well. So if you do not have shore power, you can run off of your generator set. 
You also have your kitchen light area, your living light area, your entry area, and your exterior porch light. Your 2015 Plateau XL features a number of electronic components. For TV operation, you have two options. You can run it off the 12 volt system on the inverters, or you can run it off the 110 volt system if you're on shore power or on your generator. Let's have a look at how these operations work. Just below your interior TV, your 32 inch LG TV, and below your DVD player, if you open up the cabinet, you will find two inverters. The one inverter closest to the right hand wall is to operate the interior TV and DVD player. The one on the left hand side is to operate the exterior TV. On 12 volt, you will have to turn on your inverter. You will find the off on switch on the back side next to the red and black wire connections that are on the back. Turn the inverter on and this will send power to your TV and DVD system. You can now turn on your television and DVD system and play as you would desire. If you are plugged into shore power and do not wish your inverter to be on, turn off your inverter Disconnect from your inverter plugs and replug your TV and DVD system into the wall socket. Your television antenna is a jack TV antenna. You will find this located above the driver and passenger seat near the front cabin. There is a rotational device and also a boosting device at that point. To view television stations over the air, turn on your antenna booster by pressing the black button found on the white panel just above the inverters. This will allow you to boost your antenna signal to bring in local channels. If the park that you're situated in has park cable, to bring park cable into your coach, turn off your antenna booster. This will allow the park cable to pass directly through to your television. In each situation, you will have to auto program your channels to bring in the channels that are available for the area. When operating off of the 12 volt system for your exterior TV, use the left hand inverter. Once again, turn on the inverter to operate the exterior television. Ensure that the television is plugged into the inverter system. For park cable and antenna reception, once again, it is controlled by the same booster switch and park cable accessory. When the booster switch is in the off position, no green light is apparent. You have pass through for park cable. When the booster switch is in the in position, you will have a green light, meaning that you're boosting your antenna. To operate your exterior television when you have shore power or a 110 power source, unplug from the inverter and plug the television into the wall plug. You will notice with the adapters, you have capability of having both television and DVD players plugged into this area. The DVD player for the exterior TV operates off the 12 volt system, so there is no need to plug the DVD player for the exterior television into the inverter or into the wall plug. The interior DVD player that's situated right below your 32 inch television will only play through the interior television. It is not connected to the outside television. This will enable you to watch several shows at one time, one on the interior television and one on the exterior television. Your vehicle is equipped with the Jack TV antenna. You will have to have your booster switch in the lower cabinet below your TV in the on position for this to be operational. You will also find an off on switch on the left hand side of this TV antenna. You will also find that this antenna can be rotated to bring in a better viewing status. Press the release button to rotate your TV antenna. Also you have an attenuator which will boost and lower your signal for optimum viewing. To give you access to the electronics for the outside television, you can simply pull on the finger catch which is located just below the interior TV of the upper false panel. These are positive catches. From this point, you have access to your DVD player and outside stereo to ensure everything is connected, your outside speakers, 
and also the back of your control panels for your awning and also your switch panel on the end panel. This access panel is strictly for service. There is no need to access this area if the television and DVD player are operating correctly. The lower false panel, once again, pull on the finger pull. This will give you access into the back end of your television. This also has the controller for your charging system from your solar panel on your roof. In this area, you will notice you've got your connections for your television, your cable connection, as well as your DVD connections. On occasion, you may have to check these connections if the DVD is not playing through your television. This again is a service panel for easy access for your mechanic to work on the system. In this cabinet, you'll find your solar panel charging system. This is the controller for your solar panel. This automatically monitors a bulk charge, an absorption charge, and a float charge. It automatically as well analyzes your battery and provides the appropriate charges for your auxiliary battery. This is a zero maintenance area and it does not have display as in many other solar panels. The only display needed for this system is in the kitchen upper control panel to analyze the voltage going into your battery. The solar panel used on your Plateau XL is a flexible solar panel. It is recommended that this solar panel be kept clean for the best absorption of energy. The flexible solar panel is 80% lighter than the normal glass panel. The flexible solar panel is mounted directly to your roof and does not provide any wind resistance for your vehicle. Situated below your television and DVD player cabinet, you will find your 110 breakers which control all the 110 power in your coach. You will find your breakers for your main, your microwave, your rear plug and entertainment center, bathroom and fridge GFI plug, your converter, and your air conditioner. If one of your appliances is not working in your coach, check this area. In most cases, if these breakers are tripped, they will go into a neutral position, which means they will not be locked in the full upright position. In some situations, they will be close to the full upright position. To reset the breaker, ensure that the breaker is switched fully off, and then bring it up and clip it into place for a full reset. Below the closet in the second cabinet door, you will find your multiplex wiring load center hub. In this center, you will find fuses for various components as marked on the back side of the door, as well as your inverter fuses. This is the main control for your vehicle. This will also send your signals up to your upper panel. All of the breakers in this area are auto reset breakers. There are no manual resets in this area. Once the breaker is cooled down, it will automatically reset itself. Behind the upper control panel in your kitchen area, you will find your fuses for a lot of the 12 volt components in your vehicle. To access these fuses, open the upper cabinet door and remove the cover panel with the switch panel on it. This will give you access to the fuses. The fuses are listed on the inner side of the cabinet wall. These fuses predominantly are for the lighting system throughout the coach and also your fantastic panel. To replace the panel, the panel is secured by positive catches. Ensure that you tuck all wiring in behind the panel so that we are not pinching any wiring. Lift the panel into place and snap it into the positive catches. Your Pleasure Wave Rotor Home is equipped with several safety features. The first safety feature is the fire extinguisher located just inside the screen and exterior door. This will give you access both from inside the vehicle and outside the vehicle to your fire extinguisher. A second safety feature located inside your vehicle is your smoke detector. This is located at the highest point in the ceiling. The smoke detector is controlled by a 9 volt battery. This should be tested regularly and the battery should be changed out yearly. To change your battery, flip the smoke detector open and this will give you access to your 9 volt battery. To test your smoke detector, simply push up in the center portion on the test button and this will cause your smoke detector to beep. 
the third safety feature that you will find on your Pleasureway Plateau XL is the carbon monoxide LP detector located near the back of the vehicle next to the bathroom door. Please ensure that this is not blocked by any materials. This will sound if there is carbon monoxide present or LP gas. Please refer to your owner's manual for your LP CO2 detector as well as your owner's manual for your fire extinguisher and your smoke detector for additional safety tips. Your vehicle is equipped with a 13.5 rooftop air conditioner. This is an Atwood air command system. It has an inner shroud. On the inner shroud, you have your control panel. You also have a remote control for your control panel. Your control panel can be flipped down. On your control panel, you can select your temperature. You can select as well your off on. You can select the sleep mode. Please refer to your Atwood air conditioner manual for all the instructions on how to operate your air conditioner. This air conditioner will operate off your generator and does require a 110 power source to operate. This air conditioner operates at approximately 13 amps and you will have enough power to run your air conditioner off your generator or off a 30 amp shore power connection. To keep your air conditioner running efficiently, ensure that your filters are cleaned on a regular basis. You just simply lift and pull them out of the side compartments. There is one on each side of your air conditioner inner shroud. To lock them back in position, push it in, lift up, and lock the rollers in. Your vehicle is well equipped with the Fantastic Fan. To open your Fantastic Fan, turn the T knob clockwise. Fully extend your Fantastic Fan. You have three fan speed. You have a low, a medium, and a high. This fan is also controlled by temperature inside the coach. Set your desired temperature and your fan will kick in and out at that temperature. Your fantastic fan is also equipped with a safety switch. If it is running and you lower the lid, your fantastic fan will automatically turn off. Your exhaust fan should be on when you are cooking using any propylene appliance or when you're showering to exhaust the humidity from your bathroom. Your vehicle is equipped with a 16,000 BTU Atwood furnace. To activate your furnace, you will find a thermostat located just above your television. To turn your furnace on, the switch at the top of the thermostat, click it to the left-hand side. You will find this will push quite hard as there is a point system inside the thermostat that you do have to move, move past. Also to turn it off, you will also click the switch to the right hand side. Once you have the furnace turned on, select your desired temperature and your furnace will engage. You will first hear the fan kick in for a short period of time, then the furnace will ignite. The flame will remain on for a short period of time, then the flame will kick off and the fan will continue to run to clear the system. The furnace is located to the left hand side of your fridge in the lower area. Please do not block this area as you have cold air draw and hot air exhaust coming from your furnace area. Your vehicle is equipped with a high point micro convection oven. Your convection oven is a 110 appliance. This will operate when plugged into shore power or on your generator system. Please be advised that you cannot operate your convection oven and your air conditioner at the same time on your generating system. Please refer to your high point operation manual for desired cooking and cooking temperatures. Your vehicle is equipped with the Dematic RM8555 fridge. This is a three-way fridge that will operate off your AC or 120 volt power, propane and DC for transportation down the road. It is recommended that when operating on DC that you only leave your fridge on DC for a short period of time when you come to a stop and to switch it over to either the AC power or to the propane for any periods extended longer than approximately four hours. Your fridge is an automatic fridge. You can set it to the automatic mode and it will choose the best available power source. Please refer to your domatic operation manual for proper use of your fridge. 
Your refrigerator is a single door refrigerator. Your freezer compartment is at the top of your refrigerator. This freezer compartment can be removed to give you a larger fridge capacity. Please refer to the Domatic Operation Manual for removal of your refrigerator freezer door. When storing your vehicle, it is recommended that you keep your fridge partially ajar. Domatic does equip this fridge with a door lock that will allow the fridge door to remain partially open. Press the door lock, slide it out, and with the door closed, it will not allow the door to seal. Please be aware that this will need to be reset in so that your fridge will seal when the fridge is in operation. Your vehicle is equipped with a two burner SMEV Domatic stove. This has a glass cooktop cover. Always ensure that the burners are off and the stove is cool before lowering the cover. Your SMEV Domatic stove features two burners, a larger burner and a smaller burner. These can be ignited by simply turning to the pilot light, holding the button in, and hitting the striker. Your kitchen area also features a single handle faucet. To use your faucet, lift up on the handle and select your desired temperature. You will notice your sink has a Corian sink cover which can also be doubled as a cutting board. This Corian sink cover covers a large stainless steel sink. You will notice that for the drainage your drain does not remove. You just simply lift, turn it slightly sideways and the drain will remain in the up position. To close your sink turn your drain and push it down. This now will seal your sink for washing dishes or for holding water. A secondary switch panel is located in your kitchen area. This switch panel allows you to extend and retract your sofa. It also has a generator start stop switch. It also has a water pump switch, the bathroom light switch, the master light switch, sofa valence, living room light switch, kitchen lights and counter lights. On this switch you will find your tank monitoring system, your fresh, your gray, your black water tanks can all be monitored in this area. It also monitors your battery voltage, also your generator hours, and your LP tank. Once again, your LP tank at 80% will show 100% on your LP gauge. Conveniently located in your kitchen just below the sink area, is the GFI. This is a ground fault plug. The ground fault plug will trip if there is a fault in the system. This ground fault plug controls the fridge, the bathroom, the kitchen, and the exterior plug on your vehicle. When the ground fault has been tripped, the light will appear on the ground fault plug. This indicates that there is a ground fault situation. To reset your ground fault, push the lower reset button. The light will disappear. If the light comes back on, your vehicle has a ground fault situation. It could be your connection to the outside power source, it could be the connection to the part source, or it could be a fault in the system. The ground fault will trip if there is a lot of moisture contained in one of these plugs. For your water heater, you will notice just below your kitchen sink, there is a control which will increase the heat added to the water. Your water is also affected by the flow rate and also outside weather temperature. You can increase or decrease the heat going through your water. Remember, it does depend on your flow rate. So at a rapid flow rate, you will want to have your heat up higher. Also, if it's cool temperatures outside, you will have to have your heat up higher. It is suggested that you start with your dial on medium heat and adjust the temperature accordingly as to your flow rate and the desired temperature of your water. You will notice that there is no interior switch for your water heater. The only switch for your water heater is on the outside. With that switch turned on, your water heater will activate when the hot water flow is turned on at any tap. The only control that we have inside the vehicle for your water heater is the temperature control switch. It is recommended that when you put your vehicle into storage for winter that you turn the exterior switch off on your water heater. In the kitchen lower cabinet you will notice that you've got access to the interior portion of your water heater. 
You will notice there are no bypass valves on this water heater. As for winterizing, it is safe to put antifreeze through the heating tubes of your water heater. Also, beside the water heater, you will notice your water pump. This is a SureFlow on-demand water pump, which will turn on to pressurize the system. It attempts to keep systems pressurized at 30 PSI. When you turn on your tap, your water pump will kick in. Once the water pressure reaches 30 PSI, the water pump will kick out. Essential to your water pump function is the filter ball found on the inlet side of your water pump. This filter ball should be kept clean so that you have a clear flow of water coming from your fresh water tank. Also, for winterizing, it is recommended that you hook on at the water pump and run your antifreeze from a siphon line. In the driver area, you have two upper storage areas. The first is the rectangular cabinet door directly above your range top. This is a deep cabinet. It will give you access into the complete cabinet. However, to access the whole cabinet, it is recommended that you keep the rear cabinet door closed when opening up the front bifold cabinet door. Pull the first section open. It is easier if you reach in and pivot the other section. To close the bifold cabinet door, you will swing the flat section shut first then close the main door section. Directly below the range, you will find four convenient doors. The lower drawer is a large pot holding drawer. All of our drawers have ball bearing slides and they feature the positive latch system to hold the drawer shut while in motion. The kitchen sink lower door is also a bifold door. To open this door, Pivot the first section first, then pivot the second section open. Your drawers must be shut when this door is open. You will find you have access to the rear of your water heater. You have access to your water pump in this area. The upper shelf is for storage. All of the blinds in your vehicle are accordion style blinds, except for the front windshield curtain. To use your blind, place your hands at either end of the blind and slide the blind down. This will give you a shade during the day or light blockage at night. To retract your blind, lift up on the blind and tuck it back into the open position. To open your kitchen window, press the handle forward, lift the red retainer, bring it fully extended out and push your window open. You can lock this window into position so that you have ventilation, or you can fully push your red handle through for emergency exit. For emergency exit, you will have to remove your screen, lift up on the pull tab and pull towards yourself. You will find it is easier to flip the upper portion of the screen out first, then remove the lower portion. Now you can fully disengage your window and escape from the rear of your vehicle. Below your rear closet, you have one convenient drawer. The other drawer front hides the electronics. Right now we have the tripod table base in this drawer. It is a deep drawer which will allow you lots of storage and it is conveniently located in your kitchen area. On the passenger side, just behind the TV entertainment area, there is a convenient closet. This is a hanging closet that has a clothes rod and also features a mirror on the inner panel. Plateau XL bathroom is one of the largest bathrooms for the size of motorhome that it is. It features a lot of convenience and a lot of usable space. You will notice a large upper cabinet, two doors for ample storage. A third light panel is located in the bathroom area next to your upper vanity compartments. In this area you will find your bathroom switch for your lights, your vanity switch for your lights, and also a convenient water pump switch so that if you're in the bathroom using the shower, toilet, or sink, you just conveniently can turn on your water pump. Featured in your bathroom as well is a Corian countertop, Corian backsplash, and you will notice a large towel bar located just below the upper cabinet. The sink is a large round stainless steel sink, also featuring the pop-up sink plug that is not removed. 
simply turn it sideways and your sink will remain open. Turn it and press it down to lock it into place. Now your sink will hold water. You also see a waterfall type faucet. This is a single handle faucet. Lift to use the faucet. Choose your hot or your cold for your water. Your bathroom has one plug. This plug is controlled by the GFI in the kitchen area. Below your vanity sink you have a large storage area. You also have the China Bowl toilet. This is a domestic toilet which features a lid similar to that on your home bathroom as well as the China Bowl for easy clean and a foot flush mechanism. If you push your foot flush just slightly down you will see water entering your toilet bowl and being held in your toilet bowl. To fully dump your toilet, press the foot flush right to the floor. The bathroom area features a 32 inch shower which is hidden behind the glass shower door. To open the glass shower door, turn the latch up and open your door. Your 32 inch shower features Corian walls. These are all glued and siliconed into place so that you do not have to worry about splash going outside of this area. Features a plastic shower pan with a center drain. It also features a single handle faucet. Lift your faucet, choose your hot or your cold. Also, your shower head can be raised or lowered by simply pressing the button and sliding it along the retraction bar. The shower head can also be removed so that it provides you convenience of shower. It features a skylight. If you're taller than six feet tall, this gives you standing height in your shower area. For transportation, ensure that your shower door is locked in the closed position. To swivel your passenger front seat, slide the seat into a neutral position about center of the slide. Release the swivel from the back end of the seat and swivel the seat with the backrest toward the outside door. Once the seat is swiveled, you can once again engage the slide and slide the seat back. At this position, you can also tilt your seat back to give you desired comfort. This is convenient for watching television or visiting with people who are seated on your electric sofa. By removing the armrest on the electric sofa, you will find two cup holders. To swivel the driver's seat, slide the driver's seat into a neutral position, release the handle at the back of the driver's seat, and swivel the seat with the backrest toward the outside of the vehicle. Once you have the seat swiveled to the desired location, you can adjust the seat with the slide mechanism. Please be aware that the steering wheel is the limiting factor as to positioning of the driver's seat. Your Plateau XL is equipped with a Kenwood stereo system. This is a GPS system, which is HD ready, through satellite ready, and it also has a Garmin navigation system built right into the in-dash system. This also is your backup camera. The backup camera will engage when you put the vehicle into the reverse. To engage your backup camera, press your brake, move the gear shift into the reverse. Your backup camera will appear on the screen. To access the navigation system, press the nav button just above the volume switch on your radio. Follow the instructions in your owner's manual package to set up your Garmin navigation system. To access any other inputs that you may have on your vehicle, you can hit your menu button and this will give you access into navigation disk, Bluetooth pairing with your telephone. If you have Sirius XM, HD radio, or an iPod hookup. Also, if you would desire to watch a DVD on your front system, you cannot watch a DVD while the vehicle is in motion. The parking brake must be set for you to watch a DVD on your front system. There is also a USB hookup in the storage compartment right next to the gear shift. For your dash options, please refer to your Mercedes-Benz owner's manual. All dash options are standard controls from Mercedes-Benz. You do have tilt steering and telescopic steering. You have cruise control and a few other features on this vehicle. 
Mercedes-Benz has equipped your vehicle with a battery disconnect for when your vehicle is in storage. This is the battery disconnect for the engine starting battery. It is located just directly above the gas pedal of your vehicle. Push the red button at the end of the disconnect to release it. Slide it off the pin and allow it to hang loose. This will disconnect the engine starting battery so there is no draw on the engine starting battery while in storage. The vehicle is equipped with two fuse panels from Mercedes-Benz. The first fuse panel is underneath the dash located just above the driver wheel well. To access this fuse panel, turn the knob located on the bottom 90 degrees and pull the fuse panel down. This is for the electronic operation of the Mercedes-Benz system. This is also where your mechanic will read the codes that may be coming up for your vehicle. Your secondary fuse panel is located in the driver's seat base. To access this fuse panel, unzip the seat cover, lift. You will have two access points. Push these down and remove the door. Please refer to your Mercedes-Benz owner's manual for fuse locations. This concludes the orientation part of your Pleasure Wave Plateau XL Wide Body Motorhome. For further information, please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual and the individual operating manuals for each individual appliance. Also, refer to your Pleasure Way Owner's Manual for operations.